My guest today on The Nation Wants to Know has been at the center of a media storm more intensely over the last one week, but in many ways over the last three to four years. He's caused an absolute sensation by calling himself a victim of stalking. Rithik Roshan has never spoken out before this. The nation is now divided on who's right. The nation wants to know why he's coming out to speak today. As far as celeb battles go, there has been nothing more intense, more polarizing than what's been going on in the last one week. I greatly appreciate Rithik Roshan. You're joining me on The Nation Wants to Know today. Rithik, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Rithik, <clears throat> the nation wants to know first, why are you here? You haven't been speaking for the last three or four years. It's only now that you've given out your perspective. What has made you come out and face the cameras today, Rithik? Well, first of all, I just want to say that uh, I'm not a victim, as you just said. I know it's... Uh, a word that went with that sentence, but I, I don't consider myself a victim. I don't think anything that can happen in my life will uh, make me think that way about myself. Just wanted to clear that up first. Um, a subject of stalking, perhaps, rather than a victim of stalking. I know, and I've always known that whatever I say can and will be used against me, because maybe because of who I am, I don't know. and. I have to be honest that I am very, very uncomfortable right now. I am not a person who likes to confront. I'm not a confrontation, <coughs> confrontational person. I've never had a single fight in my life, neither with a man or with a girl. Even in my divorce, there was no fight. I ask myself a simple question every single time. What's the shortest route to, pe to peace? I get my answer and I follow. I also know that there is absolutely no grace in what I'm doing right now. There is no grace in sitting here and testifying for my character and making myself sound right and good and true, and by implication, making somebody else be wrong. I don't think that's graceful. I was also very, very afraid. I have been afraid, I've been afraid that my words would be misconstrued. If, uh, if I come across as strong, they might turn me as aggressive. <coughs> If I might show some emotion, they might term me as weak. If I may sound vulnerable, they'll say, oh, maybe he's looking for sympathy. The list goes on. <laughs> it has uh, been very confusing. It's been a dilemma in my head. But, you know, if I'm walking down the street and, and a person abuses me, dignified, stronger thing to do is to keep walking. He doesn't affect my life. But if that person starts hurtling stones into my home and affects the well-being of me and my family, then that silence is uh, no longer strength. That silence then becomes weakness. And it's been four years. I think I've, I've had enough. So you're telling me that one of the reasons you're speaking out today is because you think that your silence will be seen as cowardice. You know, I am coming without any preconceived... I've just had enough. <clears throat> I need to say what I want to say. Enough of what? Enough of... I don't know what word to choose. <coughs> I cannot describe it. I realize that I have been pretending because I have to live up to this, uh, this star thing of mine that 
I got to look confident. I got to you know be cool and be okay and not uh, give any attention to something that is not important. After a while, I realized that I was pretending. I it was affecting me. It was affecting my 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 sense of community. It was affecting my. Uh, my sense of well-being, and uh, I said, you know, now I'm pretending. That's that's not being a hero. That's not strength. It's it's uh, it's, it's fake. <laughs> I had to do something about this. It's uh, it's about time. When was the snap out moment? When did you? Oh, lots of times. I've had a lot of these moments when I said, that's it. I have to say my truth. But and you people stop me. But you held back. I don't want to blame it on the people, but I was advised. To uh, to stop because you know when you're not in um, this probably is the only situation that has uh, had the ability to shift my center. Mm -hmm. I'm usually very. I'd like to believe I'm I'm very uh, very stable. But uh, in that state of mind, to come out and and uh, talk was not advisable. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I'm, I'm totally comfortable right now, but one has to grow and uh, realize that yeah. some things just need to be done. So, Rithik, we'll go into some granular details. We'll grow, mm. go through the details. We'll go through the timeline. First of all, I want to tell you to not, you know, you say you frankly, and I'm, I appreciate the fact that you're being frank enough with me and saying you're not feeling comfortable right now. Yeah. I'm very happy because there are many <laughs> no, because there are many politicians who are actually not comfortable sitting in front of me, but who pretend that they are comfortable. So listen here. Hmm. There are others who pretend. Let's talk, Rithik. Yeah. Also, let's go back. There's also a. Uh, you, you don't know, need this... to explain beyond a point. People know. That's true. You know, Rithik. People watching this program will know. I believe TV is a transparent medium. People are afraid to be vulnerable. I had to come to terms with my own vulnerability. It's okay. Yeah. I was afraid, and now I am not going to be afraid of that. I am going to allow my mind and my heart to say what it wants to say, and allow the pieces to fall where they may. If in my uh, language or my words, if uh, I hurt somebody's sentiments, I would like to apologize right now because. Okay. But let's talk straight. Yeah. When did you first meet Kangana? Uh, probably 2009, when uh, uh, 2008, when we started to shoot for kites. Right. And uh, to cut the chase, <clears throat> in 2009, hmm. when you were shooting for kites, Kangana's close friend in an article that has since gone viral said that you both quote unquote found solace in each other's company and became good friends. So Rithik, what happened? We did not become good friends. I was very, very, not just through Kites, but through Krishthri as well. I found her to be extremely, extremely professional to the extent where I was, I was really, really proud of her. I mean, she she came with her with her dialogues, with with uh, enough uh, preparation. <coughs> whether it, it was a stunt or a scene, she was just giving that camera everything that she had. Mm. And these were for my movies. Mm. Somebody, some actor, giving so much to my film. I mean, that's that's it's more than I can ask. You know, it's it's the most important thing in my uh, in, in in my work. I was extremely proud of her. And uh, I think I must have mentioned that to her a lot of times. She even uh, told me that she was very inspired by me when she was about eight years old, and uh, eight or nine years old. And, and she saw my picture in some uh, newspaper when she was in Manali, and uh, said that she was inspired by me and, and uh, wanted to you know, be an actor because of me. And no, no, it's being inspired is one thing. Being in love is another. I'm just saying what I know. So she said, uh, and I, I took that as a compliment. And uh, the other exchanges that we had were about, she had an issue with her language. You know, she was trying to learn how to speak mm -hmm. better. And I'm coming from a place where uh, 
language has been a problem for me as well. Uh, so I, I used to tell her my stories, and, and that used to kind of empower her more. Mm. So we've had such exchanges, and uh, all through the workings of both these films. So what is this business of finding solace in each other's company? Which yeah. seems to me a suggestion of a romance. Yeah. I have no idea. You'll have to ask her friend. I don't know who the friend is. Whoever's the numerous whatever. anonymous friends. In 2011, Kangana signed Krish 3 with you. She had gone on to say in a recent interview that you pleaded with her to sign Krish 3 for six months. Is this true? Well, my father had uh, an idea about the casting of this, uh, this character. And uh, he approached Kangana. And uh, she had a feeling that maybe her role will not eventually, it, it might get cut off because she's <coughs> not like the, the lead. And uh, that took, took some convincing. Mm -hmm. where my, my father then gave her an entire narration of the entire film and uh, explained to her how important that character was. And eventually, I don't think it was six months, maybe a week or two, mm -hmm. and uh, it, eventually she understood and, and she gave in. I was not involved. So was there a relationship? Again, I'm asking you, was there any relationship? No. The people are saying now, Ritik, that there cannot be, you know, there are broad generalizations being made. Yeah, there was no relationship. Like there cannot be smoke without fire. Yeah, well, fact is stranger than fiction, I guess. I don't know. There was no relationship. Nothing remotely romantic. No. What happened during the shooting of Krish 3? I you know I wonder. I, I wonder if, uh, if my need to please uh, my actors may have uh, led her on in some way. I don't know. Like I, what? Just I'm I'm uh, just it's just something that I'm wondering, you know. And if 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 if, if sending a smiley face or uh, if she was uh, doing a, a somersault on the beach, and uh, you know she managed to in her training, and she managed to do something amazing as a feat. She used to send that to me, mm -hmm. a video of that, mm -hmm. and I used to compliment her. Mm -hmm. to the skies and like wow you know uh, so I don't know if 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 if, if that is a that's all I did that's all I did if uh, that has caused all of this then I guess I'm at fault so what you're saying is that you were trying to please all your actors on your set you were being professional to when her. You're, you were being encouraging it's like, to it's her. like when you're the host and yeah. you're at uh, it's it's your party yeah it's going to be extra nice. No, but was there a people. relationship? That's not a relationship. Rithi. No, it's, there, was no rela there was no relationship. This was it. At the most, a smiley or a response to a video sent. Complimentary words, mm. smileys and yeah. Complimentary or flirtatious, if I can ask you directly. Was there anything flirtatious? No. So what happened during the shooting of Krish 3? Tell me in detail. Also, I also found Kangana a, a very, very shy person. She was very, very shy. She never spoke. We never even got to a point where we had a, a, a conversation, like a proper uh, conversation. But you were friendly. In 2012, you invited Kangana for your sister's birthday party. Mm -hmm. In 2013, you, your then wife, and your parents attended her birthday party. Yeah, of course. And September 2013, Kangana attended your father's birthday party. What was your dynamic? with Kangana in this period, 2011, 12, 13. All of this is That's now, my team. My, all of this is This is why we are shooting for my film. And I, I, I would invite them and, and hug them like, like, like <clears> they, are, they are my team, whether it's the actors, whether it's Vivek or... I mean, those were all moments of, of, uh, of celebration. I am I'm a <coughs> very proud person when, when my, my team is, is together working towards a vision. Krish 3, was the most difficult uh, challenge of our lives. Mm -hmm. And to have that support from my actors was very, very encouraging. No, was, there something, was there something more than that? Was there, was there something, no, again, I'm asking you again, no. because, because it is being said here now, and when you're going through the chronology, let's go through, it's being said here mm. now that all of this could not have happened. There's no smoke without fire. Look here, they're going to each other's birthday parties. Their family members are calling each other home. Birthday parties. Well, they're going... Well, there uh, are 100 people who are invited. Uh, 
Did you mark she her was, out for special I don't think, attention? I don't think she was invited for any other birthday parties where the films were not under production, which just shows you that uh, <clears throat> this was something that was during the production of a film. And when you're doing a film and you have a celebration, a birthday or whatever, and you're calling more than 100 people, you make sure that you include your team in so that. Tell me in all of this, was there any moment that you can recollect there's one incident spoken of that, you know, when you were in Dubai at a party for a film. Was there anything at any point of time, Hrithik, where you began to get worried? Where you saw something else? Where you perhaps saw that from her side there was, you know, you use the word that she may have misunderstood something as being led on. Was there anything like that in her behavior from your side that made you think twice? No, in fact... Any incident, uh, anecdote, moment? We were at the, the rap party for uh, a schedule that we did in Jordan, where uh, at the end, end of the party, I was ready to retire for the night, and uh, she requested me if you know, she could uh, ask me for some advice. Uh, the film is over and you know, she wanted to know what else uh, that the choices that she had in her life and what way she should go etc etc I was very very tired so I told her that you know um, let's uh, chat in the morning because we have a long flight back uh, we can chat mm -hmm. all the way uh, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll talk to you in the morning I'm mm -hmm. really really tired right now mm -hmm. so I, I went away to my room mm -hmm. um, and uh, ordered for my room service and, and the door, uh, so someone knocked at, at the door and I went, the, the knock was a little too loud so I looked through the peephole and uh, the, the keyhole and... Uh, when was this? This is all happening This in is in 2000... uh, 2012, I think, October. Okay. Uh, up until now, <coughs> it's, ev everything has, has been absolutely, you know, fantastic and mm. uh, everybody's really happy and, mm. and together and feeling really good about the film. It was just this last night where um, it ended up being her uh, knocking on that door when I saw through the keyhole and I didn't uh, think she was in the right state uh, you know for me to open like that what? door. Uh, well it's a party so you have a few drinks and stuff so uh, I called my uh, assistant Sushil and uh, he went up to her room and asked her sister to come down and uh, take her uh, back to her room and uh, that's it. That's what happened. What was she doing? She wanted to meet you, speak to you? What was she I saying? Guess, I guess she had requested uh, you know, to have, have a chat that night and I said I was too tired. So I guess she uh, came back to, you know, uh, speak, Did you speak, speak to anyone me. about it later? I spoke about it to, uh, Rangoli came up to me and spoke uh, to me about that the next day at the airport. Saying what? Saying that, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry that she behaved like that. She doesn't do that. She's a good girl. And I said, of course, Rangoli, that's, please do not think for a second that I'm judging her. I've, I have seen people, my own friends, at parties, when, you know, when you've had a few drinks. It's okay. It's not a big deal at all. Please trust me. I'm not going to repeat this ever in my life, which I am right now, unfortunately. Um, and uh, that was it. I, I even told her that please tell uh, your, your sister not to feel, feel, feel embarrassed. Uh, and if she's wanting to have, have a chat, please come over and, and, you know. Did she speak uh, to you after that? No. What was the communication after that? Uh, none. That was the last time? That was the last time for that year. Uh, another year passed when we met for the promotions of Krish 3. 2013? 2013. How was she then with you? By now it's been a year, so, you know, I... Uh, I didn't even, it wasn't even on my mind. I had forgotten about it completely. Uh, although I knew instinctively that, you know, I, maybe I should not get too friendly. Why? It was just, uh, I don't judge the behavior, but it was something that uh, made me aware that, you know, I would not do that. So I um, wanted to just keep, uh, make sure that, uh, I don't know. Were I you just, keeping I a just, distance? I just, I just thought my instinct said, be nice. Rithik, yeah. in 2013, all of the year, there were numerous articles linking both of you up. In 2013? Yes, in 2013. Yeah. It started. People started talking about it. 
with the link Not of in stories 2013, there? No. 13, no. So 2013 was there was no communication. There was no you didn't meet. Did you speak? Did you have any conversation? Well, we spoke at the promotion of Krish 3. That was one day. That's it. Uh, Dubai was uh, where we all were with the entire cast. Vivek. In fact, she mentions that when one of the males in Dubai and uh, Vivek, Priyanka, we all were there. There's no relationship. We had a good time. <laughs> Sorry to be keeping on asking you this question again. I have never met this person one on one in my entire life. You have never met her one on one? In my entire life. Well, then this is crazy. This is a I crazy situation. I don't know what to call it. I... It's okay. Whatever it is. So you've not led her on. You've not had a relationship. You've not had a romantic liaison. You'd have no one on one encounter with her. Right? And she says, and she has said it publicly, Rithik. She says that in 2014, January to be precise, that you fly down from Switzerland and you go to Paris. Mm. And you propose marriage to her. You tell her that you want to get married to her. This is before your formal separation from Suzanne. This January, because that I think happened middle of 2014. Well, we were already separated. You were separated, yeah. but you're not formally divorced. <coughs> Sorry. But she says that in 2014, you went to Paris and you proposed to her. Yeah, that's what she says. So you gave your passport to the police. When I heard that, I was pretty relieved because I, I, I thought that's great because now we have a lie that, uh, that can be demolished in a second. Then came the Photoshop pictures and I said, now we can demolish this in a second. You, know? you refute one lie, second lie, and people start seeing, but, seeing the truth, but no one did. Nobody asked these questions, they just, Pass by. January 2013, she says that you proposed marriage to her. The story started January coming... January 2014. 14. 14. She says that. So I... you proposed marriage to her. Yeah. Right? The story started getting picked up in the media when? All through, I think, uh, Feb, March, April, May, June, July. The entire year, then the entire year after that, and the entire year after that. So it just, it just went on and on. So as far as the public was concerned, there was a secret love affair. There was a proposal of marriage. Yeah. There, was, there were two people, both stars, who were... I didn't even leave the country in January 2014. I was in the country from Jan, Feb, March. All these three months I have... December 2013, been... perhaps? Any time before that? December 2013, I was in the US for a few days. You didn't go to Paris? I did not go to Europe. So when all of this came out in the media, why didn't you give an interview then? And why? say what? And say that this is a lie. How? How here, means look, you... look my passport. Here, look at this. Here, yeah, look at why that. didn't you? It's disgraceful. He said, she what do you, said... What do you mean disgraceful? You would be clearing your name. Who... It was such a hostile environment. Who would give me the right platform? You think I haven't tried? Why do you say hostile? What was hostile? Anything and everything I did was used against me. Even this interview right now will somehow be used against me. So what was happening when you... What was I your wanted to. I wanted to what? so much. I've, I've written some, some 20 blogs on this. Every time, you know, there was a, an impact on me, I said, I'm going to sit down and I'm just going to say the truth and I'm going to let this out. And, just allow it to just, just do its thing. And then I, of course, had to share it with some, some friends and, and they were just, uh, I think you can't do that. You just cannot do that. It's not, you're a huge star. And I couldn't understand what has a star got to do with the human being that I am. Precisely. How do, there was this conflict and I was trying to, understand how do I merge these two together, this star that I am supposed to be and the person that I am. So, I mean, there were, there, there were a lot of uh, reasons. And, but uh, think this, is reasons. Not a, this is not a small thing. You were going through your separation at that point of time. Yeah. You have two kids. 
somebody was going out there and saying that you flew down to Paris and proposed marriage, it could have affected you in every which way, professionally and personally. And did, you were therefore did. being sullied out there did, on a daily basis and you're telling me you did, the whole world would give you an interview. Why didn't you just come out and say then that this is the biggest lie? Here is my passport. I have not been to Paris. Yeah, what would that have done? It's this one thing, you know, that could have been changed. Oh, sorry, it was not Paris, it was some other place. That was a kind of, oh, also, we are missing the point <coughs> that up until now, up until recently, the fact that the, uh, this uh, Paris uh, thing is uh, mentioned yeah. was always in third person. It was never in quotes. It was in third person. Yeah. So yeah, always could, a close friend. So it could be denied in... Always a, a close friend. It could be denied in a second. Yeah. So yeah. I, 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 so I could not. I just, I, just, I just remembered that all through, all through 2014, 2015, 2016, yeah. and my name has not been taken once. Not by her, not by the interviewer, it's never been taken. It's all with this entire um, whatever has Anonymity. been spread. Has Anonymity. Been, yes, has been spread, spread by... Can I read out one part of an article which came out about your marriage? It's very interestingly phrased. It says in December 2013, Rithik Roshan and Suzanne Roshan had made their split public. And Rithik had immediately called her to ask her to marry him. Sorry? Call, called who? Called her. That you had called... You had called Kangana to, to, marry her. to marry you. And a close friend told this newspaper mm. that it was Kangana who had doubts about whether Rithik was proposing on the rebound. Now, this is again the close friend who's speaking, right? Mm. It's not Kangana. So, Kangana had worries about whether you were marrying on the rebound, but you gave an assurance in Paris, and she said yes, mm. because she had to. This is a narrative. And then we broke up on the Valentine's <coughs> Day or something like that. Yeah, well, it's, these are very good questions, but I think it's being asked the, to the wrong person. We need to ask the person uh, who has narrated this, whose narrative this is to explain what's, what's going on. What is the impact on you, your family? Well, I've, Dad, I've had to family, go through a lot, of, uh, a lot of emotions. And I am not willing to share them with you. <laughs> they are mine. I own them. I don't think I am going to be even able to describe or expect you to understand or anyone to understand because it's indescribable. So I'm going to own that. I'm going to um, talk about how, how great this journey has been for me. Because I have, truly have learned some incredible things. When did you meet journey. him after the marriage theory? After the Krish 3 promotions in 2013. I met her directly in 2014 on the 24th of May, mm -hmm. which was Karan Johar's birthday party. For my honest feedback. This is Queen. This is Queen, yes. And to that she uh, gave me a... Uh, a little, you know, crazy reply. She said that, but you've seen the film because you've sent me an email this morning saying how wonderful my work was in the film. And I said, I, I have not seen the film. I, I don't have your mail, your mail ID. I don't know what you're talking about. And she was very upset, and she moved away. And I followed her, and I, I, I asked if she was okay. If if there was anything I could help her with, and she just ignored that, I forgot about it. Yeah, that's, that's when I met her next. So she made a reference to an email that you had sent? Yeah. And uh, I didn't think much of it. Maybe, you know, she made a mistake or something. I woke up the next morning and I had a barrage of uh, SMSs from her on my Blackberry. The last message that I got from her was on my birthday where she said, I, I have sent you a, a gift. You have not replied. Hope you have received it. 
and I had not replied to that uh, to the SMS. So that was the last message that I saw on my inbox. I started to read the messages that she sent last night, which was from 4 a.m. in the night to 5 a.m. and they were all Hindi and they were all abusive. 25th May, 2014. 25th May, yeah. And I thought, well, you know, maybe she's lost her phone and some guy has got the contact list and is playing a prank. You say abusive, like... Uh... They were all uh, Hindi abusive uh, words. Hmm. As I said, I thought maybe somebody has got hold of her phone and is playing a prank. Saying what, a sense? What was the summon, summon substance of it? I can't. I can't mention. Just abusing it? Abusing. They were Hindi and that's all. But beyond the abusers, what was there? Nothing. It was just, just abusers. There was no sentence. What are you saying, Rithik? You're saying that on the 25th of May 2014, you just got a string of abusers from Kangana. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I didn't think it was her until I uh, opened my mail and I, there was a mail from Rangoli on my laptop. Uh, my phone and uh, I started to read that and I was completely disoriented I really uh, just <coughs> woken up and I couldn't mm. understand what what was uh, going going on mm. in the first mail she uh, accused me of, of, of hacking her sister's mail mm. and uh, forcing forcing hacking and then forcing her mm. Yeah. To shoot some videos and stuff. And yeah. uh, she also says that she knows this for a fact because she is forwarding a mail that I have sent her yeah. two days back. Hmm. And she's attached that mail to that first mail. Hmm. I have taken about 10 minutes to realize that that mail is yeah. not, not from my ID. It's yes. hroshan at email.com. And I, yeah. I, that's, that's not something that... Uh, yeah. uh, You're in is, panic by now. I'm, I'm looking panic. at these emails out here. I'm Can I read some of this just for our viewers to put it in yep. context? So this is a strange event. You say you got a series of abuses through the night which you saw in the morning. Which she corroborates in the mail. So it, And it, she it writes to coming. you, Rangoli writes, Hi Rithik, I have attached a mail from you that Kangana one day sent me my mistake. But today that mistake makes all the sense. During your relationship with her, you hacked her account. And you forced her to record many videos and click pictures as well in this mail. You are clearly accepting everything. Kangana is already very hurt, leave her alone now. If unfortunately you are thinking of misusing any of our videos and pictures, we have all the proof to prove Kangana's innocence. We have nothing against you. Kangana doesn't even want to complain about you for hacking her account. She's just too scared right now, but we believe you have no such intentions. I suppose she sent some impulsive messages last night, but you are much older. So she is a kid. The messages were from her. She's a kid, right? something like that. I don't have the full mail here. Yeah. So I responded by saying that, you know, this is not my account, somebody is playing a prank or is... 3.37 she sent this mail. 3.52, seven minutes later, you say, please come and meet me, I have no idea what you're talking about, Rangoli. And then you're in panic, you write at 3.56, what is going on? What is this? I can assure you I have not sent any other such mail. If this is a joke, it's not funny. If you're serious, you must meet me and get to the bottom of it, etc. Free post 27th. And then you send another email ID at 15 minutes later. You say hroshan at email.com is not my account. Somebody is playing a trick or is seriously demented. My account is hroshan at mac.com. Question is, Rithik, did you ever use the email account hroshan at email.com? No, I mean, look, I'm, I'm open to any kind of examination by any competent mind or <coughs> company or body or whatever. I, so whose email ID is this? Apparently the imposter. No, apparently if, told to you by whom? By uh, Rangoli's own uh, admission that, that uh, if it's not you, then we have to catch this imposter. So please, let's so file a complaint. So she writes a mail to you in which she says, OK, sir, we are very stressed. Kangana which is has been again, sending which you is pictures, again very... videos, mails and messages. She has received a lot of stuff from you as well for the last six months. Then her account, then her account has been hacked. We're ready to close the matter, but if it wasn't you, then let's lodge a complaint together because anything goes wrong, your name will be dragged in for sure. So there's both a threat in this. Yes, there but, is both a threat but she's asking me for my help right? also. She's also asking you for her help. So I've, I've kicked into gear and I have called up uh, the cyber cell. I've got my manager to call up the cyber cell. I've called up my IT guy, Mr. Lamba. Yeah. All, the, all those messages are also thankfully saved with them. Um, 
and I have found out, long story short, that uh, I should not use my mail to answer back, but I need to send them a message saying, do right. not worry, <coughs> yeah. this imposter can be caught. All they need is your original, uh, that original mail from the imposter, which yeah. is on your laptop, yeah. and they will catch this guy. It will not take time. Please, yeah. now relax. Yeah. It'll all be, it'll all be okay. Yeah. That's my message that I sent yeah. her. And the may, next mail I get was, was, was again a, so it's attack, then it's okay, sir, and then it's attack again, so it just completely But there's no direct communication here between Kangana and you, it's through her it's, sister it's and Rangoli. It's crazy what's going on here now. By 4.41 on that afternoon, then she sends you another mail and the tone is completely different. And she says, do you th really think I'm a fool? This is Kangana's sister. Is Kangana's sister writing this or is Kangana writing this? I wouldn't. What know. do you think? I, I wouldn't know. Have you ever used the email ID hroshan at email.com? No, it's, I, don't, I don't have that. But you know what she writes is, she says that you have sent this hroshan at email.com email address from your Mac ID when she was in Switzerland, mm. saying that this one is personal and the Mac one is more professional. And I have seen that email with my own eyes. And it's not difficult to pull out those old mails back from Gmail even if you delete it. So don't act too clever with me, I know everything. <laughs> is that Kangana talking or her sister talking? I don't know. I have no idea. Because even now Kangana is not replying to anything of what you're saying, it's always her sister in the public domain. Could be. She says you've been emotionally and psychologically raping Kangana. Yeah, that's, that's the word I read and I, I just shut myself out from this mess. I said, I have done my job as a co-star, as a friend. You said you were in trouble, that uh, Kangana has been uh, communicating with, with somebody who is pretending to, to be me. I feel a little responsible. I do my bit. I, uh, uh, you know, call up the cyber cell. I call up my IT guy. I yeah. get the solution, I pass the solution on to them. <coughs> yeah. And then I am hearing words like rape. Mm. And uh, that, that's when I switched off. I said, you know, I want nothing to do with this. Mm. I, you know, it's not reasonable for me to help and then mm. uh, hear such words. But there's, but there's something more than that. It's all, she also said it won't be very difficult to prove your physical involvement with her on the Krish set. It's a threat. It's a threat. I guess. See, if it's true, it's defense. If it's false, it's blackmail. <laughs> so I guess it's false. <laughs> so what did you do? You were being accused of rape, psychological and emotional rape. Yeah. You were accused of having a relationship with her. And she also says here, she's Hindi, Utni ha uski halat itni kharaab thi kal usne mujhe apne saath rehne bhi nahi diya. Jo mails maine aapko bheje, uske liye mujhse upset hai. Mujhe bol rahi hai ki tune jhoot kyu क्यों कहा मुझे जो ये भी मुझे तो ये भी नहीं पता कि आप लोगों के बीच में exactly क्या चल रहा है so there's a contradiction here she's admitting that she had no idea and I think there's another line where she's uh, tells her that I think y'all are just friends she says that तो मैंने कहा कि लगता तो नहीं कि तुम लोगों का वैसा relationship है it seems you guys are only friends so, Did you reply to this? No. You didn't reply to the mail where she accused you of emotional and psychological The, mo the moment I heard that word, I just, I just stopped. I did not want to associate or be a part of any more exchanges after I heard that word. No person in the right mind, no dignified person, even who's going through some, some kind of stress, would just blatantly accuse uh, use, using such a harsh uh, word. Uh, I had nothing to do with this. I, I have had a very good uh, working relationship with this, with this person. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need to go through this. Mm. Did you get scared? Yes, very. I got very scared. You got very scared? Yeah. What were you scared of? You know, this is a high profile person. And I just, I, I was trying to wish this away. It's like, please, you know, I hope this doesn't escalate into something. I don't want my name being dragged into something else again. So I just wished it away and it did. It, it, it did go away after her last mail that, uh, <coughs> that she sent. Mm -hmm. it, you know, three, four, five days on, I, I, I completely forgot about it. And I went on with my life. Did you talk to your dad, to your family, to anyone about this? My team, my, my entire team. team knew it. And uh, they were on their guard whether, you know, any uh, of my accounts are hacked or but then it just... Uh, so it died for a while? It died, yeah. It completely died. 
completely died for, for more than a month. Listen, Ritik, let's understand what the hell is going on here, right? Because this is the most crazy story anyone's heard and anyone's going to hear in a long time. I know. Time. And I feel responsible for it because I have to narrate it. But please understand, this is not of my making. I am simply narrating what happened to me yeah. without making any opinions or judgments. Yeah, I appreciate that. Now, what I'm saying is, if we look at this in terms of a synopsis, the situation that we have here is, you have had no... If, if what you're saying is true, you have no relationship with her. You've had never been with her in a room alone together, leave alone, have a physical relationship. And then she says that she knows that you watched a film, she accuses you of sending mails to her. That is not your email ID. Mm. And then her sister blackmails you. And her sister accuses you of psychologically and emotionally raping her. And then she says, it's okay. You know, let's just uh, end this matter here. And then she says, it's okay, let's end yeah, the matter. So it's fine, okay. So Great. 25th May 2014, let's end the matter. Correct, yeah. And three, four <coughs> days I didn't hear from her <coughs> you thought it's or okay. them. I thought maybe it was a bit of an impact for them to realize that, oh my God, she's been communicating with an imposter. Why didn't you pick up the phone and talk to her? Because I had evidence in the past about the Karan Johar uh, party night. That was weird. Then I have these emails where they are, it's nothing is making sense. They're accusing me of, of hacking and, and, and uh, forcing her to uh, shoot these explicit videos and pictures and sending, uh, I've been sending them to myself. This is a, it's something is not right about this. It, I don't operate at this frequency. I'm, I have to, we all have our daily problems in our lives. There's a lot of things we need to deal with throughout our days, as it is. I was not going to take another problem on my head and, and get into it. I didn't want to get into it. It, 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 it's, it was scary. It, it had a, a you know, it's stunk of something that's, that's dark and it's, it wasn't right. I didn't, I chose not to involve myself in Okay, further. so now I'm not going to make any value ju judgments right now because you said you're not making any value judgments. I'm not going to make any value judgments on what you're saying. Whether what you did is right or wrong, that's not in my place. People watching this chat and conversation will make that judgment on their own. As I began by saying, Rithik, television is a transparent medium. We all get a sense of what the reality is. And that's what I'm hoping this comes out of this interview. So there's one month, one and a half months of calm, right? Hmm. And then there is a mail. Yeah. So this mail is dated the 13th of July. This is Kangana Ranaut's email ID. I'm not putting the email ID out. And it goes to you. This time it is to your correct ID. Now that they know my, my right ID. Now I, that I they the know mail. your right ID. And this ID seems like, this mail seems like, um, the first mail is just a continuation of a relationship and a conversation. And she says, before I send you the next email, I'd like you to tell me how and where you would like to receive my messages. Would you like any other account for us or should we use text messaging? Is there any medium you would suggest? I'm okay with anything. I just want us to trust each other and let's try and talk about our concerns. And then she says, I'm not even going to tell Rangoli and my mom that we are talking. So she promise, promises you anonymity. And mm. she promises you uh, the cover of uh, having a secret relationship. Mm. So she's promising you a secret mm. slash clandestine relationship because anything that is not public is clandestine. Mm. And then she says that she would like to go to Prague. To? To Prague, Prague one day. I don't know whether you were shooting in Prague. So she's following you. These were not the first mails though. The first mails started with I miss you and then there were some, a few, uh, what do you call it? What's your plan baby? Explicit, what do you call some it? Some explicit mails. They no, were the, about, you're saying uh, the first mails are explicit? The first mails were explicit. They are not in your... Uh, the, the first mails that she sends you are explicit? Yeah. Starts with I miss you. Um, and then there were some explicit mails and then th this uh, particular uh, mail. So you started receiving explicit mails from her? First, yeah. And what did you do? This mail started, it, it started with one, then 10, then 15 on that first day and then I got, <coughs> I was afraid. So I, I started to, by the, I think by the third or the fourth day, I started to 
uh, send them to my spam and my junk. Mm. I don't know why people keep saying, why didn't you block the mails? They're no, there's in, a on, question. In my, Wait, there's in my a laptop. Question here. There's a question here. And her lawyer says, when his name, image, and reputation was at stake, and he was accused of hacking my client's emails and was also accused of being in a relationship with my client, besides there being a charge on him that he has sent a lot of stuff in the last six months to my client, and therefore there cannot be any imposter. When this situation was going on on the 24th of May 2014, then why did Mr. Rithik Roshan not bother to find out what exactly was the stuff which was sent by my imposter to my client? And why did Rithik file a complaint belatedly without the knowledge of my client after seven months, only after he had collected sufficient one-sided, unreliable and fabricated emails from my client's hacked email accounts? The basic question in simple English is, if you're being sent explicit mails, vulgar mails, uh, suggestive mails, amorous mails, lustful mails, mm. seductive mails, allurement mails, whatever mails. Why did you keep is, receiving the mails? The word is offensive. How? Why, why did keep... you keep receiving the mails? If I send you an email right now, yeah. how would you stop the email from entering your inbox? I'll block you. In my computer, it did not offer me any blocking uh, option. There is no blocking option in, in, in your laptop. In, if you have a MacBook Pro, hmm. that's what I have. There is no option that shows up like WhatsApp to block. It is not there. I have, I have hunted. <laughs> Believe me, I have. When people said, why didn't you block? Why didn't you block? I said, what the hell? Why didn't I block it? Yeah, let's open the uh, laptop and, and uh, look for uh, this blocking option. It's not there. So what are people talking about? You cannot block. You can only either spam it or junk it. And that also the computer learns over time to select those Did you very... spam it? Did you junk it? Yes, immediately. And, and it I... kept coming? Did, Did you read the mails? I must have read about uh, 40 or 50 of them. How many mails came? Uh, 3,000 odd mails. How, what percentage of it was explicit? The ones that I read. Uh, the, I read about you know, 50 of them or 60 of them, and then after two years, mm. when the, this, <coughs> see, for the first two years, mm. the harassment was in my, it was limited to my laptop. Mm. But in 2016, after two years, <coughs> it, the harassment became public. She was talking about uh, how I am a silly ex and uh, you know, stuff like that. And that is when I got afraid. I no, no, one I minute. Said, Go back. Mm. You are receiving mails now. Yeah. By now, you're receiving mails. How many mails? Two, three, four, five mails a day? Probably. Mail a day? More, more, more than more than a mail a day. Yeah, pictures, six, five, six yeah. videos, not videos, pictures, no video. still pictures. Yeah. Some some videos, yes. Still pictures, still pictures. Of what? Uh, her private pictures that you know. Rithit, let me get it right here. By this time, you have received some three thousand emails. Most of them are explicit. Large number of them are explicit, and you have continued receiving these emails for a long time. And she says, her version is that you've gone completely crazy by now in your obsession about her, that you've started hacking into her emails to send her the, to send yourself the emails pretending to be her. Yeah. Right? That's the version which we've got from her. That is the version, yes. Yeah. And you kept receiving these emails. What doesn't add up is that on the one side you say you were scared. But on the other side, you haven't responded by doing anything. If it was one email, two emails, three emails, I can understand. Yeah. But how can anyone receive 3,000 emails from one person, threatening, explicit, of whatever type, multiple times a day, and do nothing about it? Well, first of all, if I have hacked these mails and sent myself 20, 30 mails a day, 3,000 mails for over whatever number of months, <coughs> If you, if you read the contents of the mail, it recounts the happenings of her entire day. It recounts what she has been doing, what she ate, who yeah. are the people that she met, what yeah. were the conversations, plus the pictures. Yeah. I could not have possibly, first of all, hacking is not something that is an everyday, it's not like, a, like changing a battery on, in your phone. It's 
it's a it's a very very technical you need some kind of device or something to hack someone's mail chalo i hacked the mails and i have uh, sent myself emails but how can i send myself pictures that she has uh, taken these are very very private uh, pictures and some no, of them she says that you took videos and pictures of her if i go back to rangoli's first email she says yeah. pictures and emails were taken by her maybe you had taken intimate i'm just saying here i'm yes, playing devil's yes, advocate please, that maybe please, you had taken please. intimate pictures of her when you were in a relationship with her and then started obsessing about her and sending back to yourself pretending to be her her intimate pictures yeah well that just it depends on uh, the assumption that i've had a relationship i have But not what? you have i have not there is no relationship these are the first times in my life that i'm receiving mails uh from uh, this person's id first time in my life and they are recounting her days um i mean why didn't you send one reply to her kangana this is rithik from his original email id Arnab, i would not want to receive any such sexually explicit my, emails from you my higher understanding of life has taught me that sometimes ignorance is the best way to dissuade somebody from or discouraging someone from actions which are intrusive like this so what this I is not the first time i'm understanding i'm not getting you this is not the first time that i have had somebody sending me mails like this mm. there there have been uh situations in my life where i have received uh, umpteen number of uh mails which were all all random S- one one person just constant uh, constantly being obsessive and i learned in my past that if i my my ignorance discouraged that and it stopped i was hoping that my my non reaction would discourage this act and it's not that i have just been passive about it i have been troubled i have been concerned i have spoken to friends i have spoken to the, the the people in the industry that what should i do do you do you know somebody who is a friend of hers hmm. could i could you help me just just find why did you find not access reply? you see okay so in the email why did 30, not reply in the email on 13 july 2014 from kangana's email id to your id it says before i send you the next email i'd like you to tell me when and where you would like to receive my messages when you received this mail my question to you is why didn't you reply and clarify things i already did so where is the mail why did one, you write one, one mail one to one, one one month i back. would not like to re- no you can say dear kangana this is rithik i would not like to receive your mails and messages particularly specifically do not send me ex- sexually explicit messages with regards thanking you rithik roshan the effect that my conversation with ranguli a month ago the effect that that had on me when i heard terms like rape when i had all already I, I, if you if you read the contents of the, of the mail this 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 is uh, I didn't find any uh, kind of coherence in in their language or th- this it was a mess. Now in your email on 13th August 2014 according to your police complaint Kangana used sexually explicit language and deliberately attempted to entice you. Why didn't you file a police complaint earlier? As I said I Your first police complaint is in 2016. A police complaint would go public. I would have had to maybe name the person I didn't want to get into that. I was going through my own problems at at that time. And I also want to establish here that while these mails were coming to me, while they were coming to me, mm. I was a single man. Mm. I was a single man 2014, mm. 2015, 2016. I've been a single man. Mm. I could have replied. Mm. I could have even made a phone call. Mm. I could have sent one SMS saying, "Okay, fine." come over i could have thank god i did not because if i had sent even one sms or one phone call i would not have been able to fight this case so you you're saying she was trying to collect evidence against you sorry you're saying she was trying to collect evidence against you i don't know what she was doing because you know in an email dated 15th august 2014 it says do you find it weird to receive my mails at your work mail id yeah and it says should i try sending mails on your earlier id email.com1 no 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 one minute one minute rithik this is not 
innocent. You, if you had replied to this, say, you could send it to that ID or this ID, that would have been an acknowledgement that the email ID was the ID which you were using. Anything I would have replied would have constituted an exchange. I did not want to associate with this at all. It was not in alignment with my higher purpose in my life. I am in alignment with, with doing constructive work. I am a creative person. I believe in productive work. I have my kids. There are a lot of things that, that I was building at that time. I had no interest in this. I had no interest. Until it came to a point where it started manifesting in the outside world. This was in my inbox. I can handle that. There's a lot of things in my life that I have handled without treating myself as, as somebody who's a victim or somebody who uh, can't handle something and, and gets rattled. I do not get rattled. I could, I could, I deal with my problems. If this is a problem, I know what to do with it. I can just brush it aside and continue with my life. Rithik, why were you not protecting yourself? That was a mistake. Why were you not protecting yourself? I mean, I'm I sorry. I agree I'm with so, you. No, no. I'm, I, I, the one part which doesn't add up to me at all, I can tell you anyone watching this interview yes. will be, this man has been told he's got married to her. In the public imagination, he's got married to her while his formal divorce with his own wife has not, not at this come time. through. Not at this no, time. No, 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 no. no. In 2014. That was right? later. The, the email, the email stopped. stopped. <laughs> the, the, chrono the, cr the chronology of this is, is, is to be understood. It's a little tough. It's uh, got so many layers. 2014 were the males. 2015 is when she makes it public. No, I'm not going to 2014 yet. I'm in 2014. Yeah. In 2014, you are receiving 3,000 emails. Yes. You realize it's insane. Yes. So what are the you, things I did? You know, so, so the thing is six months, that's 150 days, 3,000 yes. emails. Averages to, you know what we are talking about, Rithik? 15 to 20 emails a day. Yes. That is all an email going every all two hours. After one or two weeks. It stopped bothering me because it went into my spam. I never read them. It was cybercrime that helped me retrieve all these mails from junk after two years so that I may understand Where's what's going on. Where's the proof that cybercrime helped you? I went to them. And to the Mumbai police? Yes. You're saying the Mumbai police helped you retrieve the mails? The Mumbai police, not the police. Your, it, cyber, your own cyber people? The cyber people who did my forensic. They help me to retrieve all the mails, so I may read through and try and understand what, what and why you is this happening. You mean all these mails, out of these mails, thousands of emails went to your spam box, you never read them? I never read them. Who are these forensic people? Uh, I, they, I don't know their Will names. they speak on record? Of course, I'm sure. They are, they are a, 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 con uh, a competent, uh, well-known, established institution, and uh, of course they will be happy to talk. Rithik, you have received emails which say, Sometimes I feel so unsure of everything. Does our love really exist or is it a fantasy? And it says, I feel something. Something I never felt before. I feel fear and I'm scared. What did you make of these bills? I will reserve my opinion, Arnav. I'm not here to pass any judgments or opinions because that's not my job. I am but, not a, but, I'm but not a doctor. Think if somebody has seen these mails, and neither will I pass any judgment. I'm not going to say the word. No, I'm not going to say the word either. But what I'm telling you is that this is uh, worrying. There are, there are mails where, where she describes, she describes the last day of Krish 3. I think if, if you look at the right mails, everything gets very, very clear. If you look at the, the mail that she describes, the last day of Krish 3, which was the promotions, Dubai, where Vivek, Priyanka, my dad, we were all there, sitting there. And she says that she wanted to speak so much, but why didn't she ever speak to me? Because every time she was in front of me, she got nervous. And as I said, she was very, very shy. That was my experience of her. And she says that I, she wishes that she could have said something but that's her, that's her problem, that whenever she sees me, she, she gets quiet, she gets nervous, and she's never been able to tell me the things that she wanted to tell me. But she says, 
I will tell, tell you in these mails now. This is 2014. Now, you could have, you could have, when you're receiving these mails, mm. you could have gone across to her. Oh, yeah, I tried. I you tried. Could have, you could have gone and met her. You could have had a conversation. You could have spent time. If there were some issues, you could have discussed. Yes, yes. That's Since what you I... keep speaking about a higher purpose in life, why yes. was it not your higher purpose in life, Prithik? That you could have gone and had a conversation and cleared the air, conversed. Maybe a conversation would have helped, but you didn't do it. Why didn't you do it? I spoke, I had a very in-depth conversation with the commissioner, police, at no. that point of time. No, with her. I had a conversation with Mr. Javed Ahmed. Right. Who was the commissioner at that time. And I asked him for advice. I told him, this is what I want to do. I want to what, meet... What do you want to do? I want to meet this girl. And I want her to, to, to meet her with, her with her sister and her parents. I just simply want to go there and show them and ask them if they are aware that this is happening. And to find a, find a solution for this. He stopped me. He said, Ritik, that's, that's, that's not intelligent because in a case like this, after that meeting, you do not know how, uh, how this person would, would, uh, would, uh, would, would construe that and, 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 and what she would tell the world. That what did I come and do? It was not advisable. And I, I had no choice. So you're saying I, you, in fact, even called You're saying up, you wanted to meet her, you wanted to have a conversation with her, sort up, it out, I but the even, Mumbai police commissioner told you not to. Not to. Will Mr. Javed Ahmed corroborate this? I hope so. What were you just saying? I even called up uh, her producer, Mr. Sajid Nadiadwala, who was shooting with her. Hmm. And I requested him for some time on his set. You can ask him that. And I said, I simply need half an hour. I want to send my, my manager <coughs> to meet Rangoli and, and her sister to just make them aware Maybe Rangoli does not know that these emails are being uh, sent to me. Just to have a conversation, and maybe that awareness would, would direct them to a better solution or... But it was denied. Denied by whom? They did not get... They were outside the van, but they did, did not get a time to... Uh, or allowed to... Uh, the, but you were doing it via media. Did you ever try to reach out to a director? I, as I said, Arnab, I was told very strictly not to do that, not to have any conversation, not to call for, from, from, from my phone. Because, and I, I, I have to leave these... Uh, I don't know the mechanism of law. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, in that business. I don't know the mechanism of media. I am uh, I'm very media shy. I have to rely on, on, on their advice because they understood that this is a far more serious matter than just a, you know, it's not just a fight or it's, it's far more serious. How can an actor be media shy? Yeah, I need to change that now. I need to change that now, probably, but I have been. I've been shy because of my own shortcomings, I guess. I saw the emails, Ritik, some of them. Some of them I find strange mm. because in some emails, if the pictures, if you have posted these emails, see the chances are the options are three. Actually, the options are two, that you're writing these emails, faking it to yourself or, or she's she writing the emails, faking it to us. One of us definitely. So one of you certainly needs, needs, needs help. Needs help. It could be me. Are you being funny? I should not. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if I have written these mails to me, I definitely need help. One of the emails, which is titled Super Sleepy, written on the 21st of August, and I'm not showing the picture here, has a picture of Kangana. Right? And it has a picture of Kangana that is a selfie. This weighs in your favor because I don't understand how someone, if you are her or pretending to be her, how can the fake you, which is pretending to be her, take a selfie of Kangana and then post it to Hrithik, mm. pretending to be Kangana? 
I will leave this to the common sense of the people. But the point is not that. The point is the evidence was weighed in your favor. You should have, you should have been on the front foot and either taken it to the police then. Or I, have tried, I have tried every single way. I have met her, whoever has worked with her. I, I, I met her mentors. I met doctors. I met, I met a variety of people. I met some top stars of the industry to help me. What do I do? And all of them, most, most of them, expressed deep concern for, for both of us. That this, this is not, this is a far more serious problem. And that I first needed to protect myself. For that purpose, I had to give, yes, surrender all of this material for my protection to the cops, to cybercrime. And I could not even do that, by the way. I could not do that. For a long time, I could not do that. Because any act by me, anything that I, I, I would do would, would be termed as, oh, this guy is attacking again. I'm not attacking. I'm not here to fight. I'm not fighting. I've been involved in something I'm not a part of. I'm a bystander to what's happening. So I had to actually delay giving all of this to the cops by more than, I think, a year and four months. I had to wait till 2017, April, when everything died down. When did the email stop? The email stopped around, uh, <coughs> let me just continue my thought. Uh, I had to wait, I had to wait. Uh, to, to file my complaint because I wanted it to be done in complete secrecy because this was purely my story that I wanted the cops to have just in case something untoward happens yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. No, I get I'll come there. I'll come to 2016. I'm asking you these yeah. explicit, sexual, direct 3,000 males. When did and those you, males I'm, stop? They, they are not sensual males. They are not... They are... They are they're offensive to the senses. Tell me about it. That's as what much as I can What do you mean offensive to the senses? That's as much as I can say. No, you describe them. You don't have to read them out. I can't. You're saying they're crude. Whatever words, yeah. But as I'm saying is that they are not, they are not sensual males. They're, they're not... Uh, it's... As I said, they were... They were Offensive. Sexually offensive. Offensive to the senses. Hmm. When did the mail stop? The mail stopped on the 11th of December, <coughs> 2014. Rithika, I'm looking at the mails and here there's one mail which says, also I'm thinking when we are shifting, when you are shifting to your new house baby, when your kitchen is ready, I want to set it up. It says, I'd like to train your staff based on your requirements. What do you think I must be thinking when I'm reading this? this yeah, is, these, are, these are one-sided males, incessant males, just continuously talking as if there is interaction. There is another email which says, Aap fir se sari raat nahi soye, ye baat nahi samaj aati mujhe, kyu karte ho aisa? It's like she, she met you. No, I don't know. I, how could she have known? She says you hacked into her email ID and sent this mail. Well, how does that make sense? It makes no sense. There are a lot of things that, that uh, have been mentioned. She talks to me about the mosquitoes in Bandra. Mm -hmm. Talks to me about what she ate. Anyways, uh, I really don't feel comfortable talking about uh, uh, or explaining. Uh, when did the email stop? They stopped on the 11th of December. 2014. 11th of December 2014. So the mail started around July 2014. Yeah. And they carry on the barrage of emails, yeah. 15, 20 a day, and suddenly end in December 2014. What was the last May? <coughs> Why did it stop? December 11th, 2014, hmm. there was an article in the DNA paper hmm. saying Kangana's mystery man <coughs> uh, revealed. And uh, that morning, now that we have studied the mails after two years, because I... 
I had to make sense of this whole thing before I could understand what to do with it. So I, I read these mails two years after uh, when they helped me retrieve these mails. Right. And on the 11th of December, uh, when the article came out, mm. On that day, her mails start off on a very, very bright note that we are going to you know, uh, spend our future with each other, the world will know now, and it's going to be so happy, and et cetera, et cetera. And through the day, it turned uh, angry and then abusive. Hmm. Through the day. And that was the last that... Uh, so there are these, let's understand, there are all these mails which are trying to tempt you sexually, <laughs> explicit mail sent over a period of time and about setting up and living a life together, etc., etc. And then mm -hmm. there's suddenly an article which says that you're mis you are the mystery man. And then after that, you're saying the, the mails turn abusive. On the same day. It started off on a very bright note. And then uh, they turned abusive. And she also mentions that this article <coughs> is going to come out. And now we are going to be free and etc., etc. And... Throughout the day, I think uh, I um, also tweeted on that day. Mm. And uh, by the end of the day, her, her mails turned completely abusive. And she ends by saying, you know, uh, whatever, something in Hindi, that I'll scar you for life or something. <coughs> I think I have that email. I'll just read it out, Riddhik. What do you want to say to people while we are taking a little break on the program? who are looking at this and saying, I've never heard a crazier version of what's going on. And there'll be somebody saying film stars are crazy. What would you say to them? Well, there's no point in, in uh, judging or accusing. I think the focus now should be on, on a solution, on <clears throat> maybe learning something from, from this, getting more aware mm. of uh, cyber crime or theft or whatever. Because I think no longer will your uh, thieves enter through your, 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 your gate or your door. I think they can just enter through the thin air and create havoc in your bedroom. Uh, I, think, I think it's very, very important for people to be aware. One of the emails, 19th November 2014, towards the end of this crazy situation where she's sending you mails, says, तो पंगे मतले नहीं तो सारी उम्र के लिए स्कार हो जाएगा कोई थेरेपी नहीं चलेगी दीवारों पे सिर पटकता मिलेगा और वैसे भी बेवकूफ जब मुझे पता है तूने मेरे अकाउंट को हैक किया है एट्सेट्रा एट्सेट्रा एनी शी सेस अपनी औकात की कोई लड़की देख और वहां दिमाग लगा ज्यादा ऊंचे सपने मत देख एट्सेट्रा एट्सेट्रा एंड शी रिपीट्स हियर नहीं तो स्कार हो जाएगा Hmm. This was a threat now. You should have responded at least then. You could have gone to the Why? police then. Why? Why not? I did. On that, that's the day I, I, I went to uh, the cybercrime and I, I lodged my, my complaint. That's the day to cybercrime. But Arnav, you have to understand that all this time I am thinking, all this time, and this might have been a wild goose chase in my mind, but all this time I am still blaming the imposter. I have... You mean you never thought she was writing these mails? Please understand. These you mails... thought somebody hacked into her email no, no. account to send these mails? Let That's me impossible. No, no. Let me explain. Rangoli's mails say that she has been communicating with some guy at hroshin at email.com for the past six months. One month after that, she starts mailing me on my right account. Yeah. What do I think? I think, oh my God. She is extending the relationship that she's had with this imposter communication. She's extending that towards me now on my right account. So I'm all this while thinking that this person <coughs> is not realizing what she's doing. So you I, actually I, think she is innocent at that point of at time? At that to point the of time, that you I am think feeling that bad for her. Oh, this is, uh, all through that, I am feeling, how do I stop this Don't tell me person? you're so empathetic. Whatever I am, I am. No, I, you, I'm not, you, I'm not going you, to explain. Are you saying this? Are you saying, Ritik, that you actually felt that she had been misled by the imposter into believing she has a relationship with Ritik Roshan? Unfortunately, that's what I thought. And that she was the victim of the circumstances and was continuing this relationship with you on email, assuming 
that it was not an imposter in the past. It was, uh, it, it, it was one of the primary thoughts in my mind, which is why when I went to cybercrime, I lodged a complaint against the imposter in which she became a witness. I, have, I, I did not even attack her. I did not even mention her name, which of course they asked more questions and then eventually they knew it wasn't. Did you at any point of time think that uh, she was behind this? Who? Kangana. With these males, yes, of course. That she was planning it? Oh. <laughs> I have tried to look at this and analyze this in 10,000 ways, Arnav. In millions of ways. I don't know what the truth is. I really don't know. You really have to ask the person. But that's where, you know, there's a catch. Yeah. The catch is this, that you say that till 2014, you still give her the benefit of doubt, thinking that she has I am, been missed. I am upset. I am harassed. I am uh, feeling like I need to do something about this. I have gone to my friends in the industry. I've gone to the commissioner. I am going through all of that. At the same time, I am also thinking that if she has been communicating with this person for six months and then extending that relationship towards me, I have to find this imposter, this, this guy, whoever he is or she is. If I find that, the case, goes, case is closed. So if, for you, the villain is the imposter, not Up Kangana. until then. Up until then, the villain is the imposter, not yes, Kangana. Yes, and I have traveled a lot of uh, miles to uh, find this guy. This picture, I'm going to hold it up and then we can run. She's putting this picture out. Yeah. Our sister is putting this picture out. I'm going to hold it and then we'll show it on graphically. Of you holding her by her waist, close to her, in an extremely yes. intimate pose. Yes. No, 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 I'm sorry I'm taking a detour from what we're talking about. Because at the core of this, I still want to address the question that's on the minds of people today. Yes. No smoke without that fire and understand I want you to respond to the narrative of your being Mr. Sure. Famous and Mr. Rich. Taking advantage of a newcomer. And you have been described as by a socialite columnist as a megalomaniac who takes advantage of young small town girls. You are rich, Mr. Rich, Mr. Famous, son of a film star. You know, That's exploiting right. her. It doesn't affect me. And then this picture emerges. And her sister puts this picture out saying that, Rithik, what? for you, this is proof that you and Kangana were physically intimate. What happened? When did you take this picture? Well, first of all, when this picture came out, <coughs> the very next day it got exposed. It got exposed by all the other people who were at that party, including my ex-wife, who was very much a part of that, not just part of that party, but also part of that very picture. You're saying when this picture was taken, Suzanne was there? She was there, along with a lot of our friends. How is it possible friends. that you and Kangana are taking an intimate picture and your wife is standing next to you? Because she was in that picture and uh, she had tweeted the next day. All my friends tweeted pictures the next day uh, of uh, different poses <coughs> that we were doing. It was a party, we were doing something that was fun at that point of time. It just seemed like fun to enact posters of these old Hindi films. Mm -hmm. And there was Dino and uh, uh, me and Suzanne and we were all doing, you know, there was a... Uh, Dino is Dino Moria. Yes. And there are pictures of all of them doing these poses. You think, you're saying that this was, a, this was an enactment, not real? It was an, an enactment where we were all having fun. No, but, but, and it, but it was Riddick a lot Kangana of fun. says that this is a proof of your intimacy. If you, if you see the pictures, the, the, the person behind has been photoshopped. Her arm has been removed, trying to uh, make it look as if this has been done in a private setting. There were 50 people and a lot of more pictures were taken. A lot of more pictures of certain poses of old Hindi film posters. Call it what you may, but... You know, it seemed like fun at that time. <laughs> this is all very messed up, you know. By 2014, mm. it's sounding totally messed up. You've received threats. You're mm. being blackmailed. You're being told that you're going to be scarred for life. You're not responding. My only question to you repeatedly is what doesn't add up is that either you're very empathetic, either you're very understanding, but you actually don't even consider her to be a villain. You are fighting in your own mind an imaginary imposter or an, or an imposter rather than Kangana. Yeah, well, I've learned. I've learned my mistakes. 2015, Prithik. 
is when the entire media goes ballistic about your relationship with mm. Kangana. It's now taking on a different dimension. Tell me about 2015. Mm. What do you want to know? I want to know what happened in the media. There were stories about both of you. I want to know whether it is true, and this is what I have heard, that you actually encountered another actress at a film about a film release and you asked her why you were not invited for that film release and you were told that your yeah, the person well, you're having a relationship with told you I'm not taking not any names don't take any names but tell us about 2015 because that happened in 2015 a lot of things happened uh, yes. the harassment which was limited to my my <coughs> inbox was now slowly and I thought it, it was over when the 11th of December when I received that last mail whatever it was uh, the DNA story came out and I, I thought, okay, now it's over because I didn't receive any more mails after that. Yeah. So I said, I actually felt like I did the right thing. I walked my truth. I did not get rattled as much as to, uh, to, 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 to react to it in, in a flutter. I did the right thing. I, I uh, filed a complaint against uh, the imposter. And now this had as, and I got proven right that yes, ignorance is sometimes the best way to deal with intrusions like this because I discouraged this entire, uh, you know, action. Jan, Feb, March of, of 2015, slowly, slowly, I started meeting people who were making uh, these uh, jokes uh, and including uh, the lady uh, as if, you know, you know, how is she? No, who is lady? Kangana. Yeah. Uh, insinuating that, you know, what's happening, but in a, in a joking way. Really? Now, it was a joke to them, but for me, I know the seriousness of this. And I, I had nothing to say. I, I know that this is something that is, 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 um, is serious. And I have a year of, of, of this experience, and people were joking, and, and, and I didn't know how to react. But I just, I just let it go. I just, I just kept on creating, uh, concentrating on, on, on my uh, work. A few times I, I, I met uh, some uh, very big names, some, some actors, who I, when I asked them that, you know, uh, I was, I so wanted to, uh, you know, watch the trial of your film, but, you know, you didn't call me and you should have called me. And, and the person said, I wanted to call you, but I, but I could not because your girlfriend stopped me. I was like, girlfriend, I don't have a girlfriend. And the person said, the lady's name. What lady? Say the lady. Why don't you name Kangana? You have Kangana. a problem. Even now you're not naming Kangana. It doesn't matter. Okay. I, so they said yeah, they stopped. You know who I'm, talk, I'm hmm. talking about. Then? So they said that I, I, I was stopped by your girlfriend. Hmm. Her name came up and I was in absolute shock hmm. with, a, with, a, with a desperate desire to make this other person believe that, that, that nothing of this sort Mm. is true. I, mm. I can't understand it. Mm. And what hit me and what impacted me was that I was failing because this person was almost convinced. Mm. And that scared me. It scared me that people who were being spoken with by this person were getting convinced and it was spreading. It was spreading everywhere. Slowly, there were articles in the newspapers, Rithik Kangana going strong, Rith, uh, Kangana uh, to join Rithik in, in the Maldives, etc., etc., etc. I was shooting uh, Mohenjo-daro in Bhuj, and uh, uh, the, the producer's wife uh, told me that I believe that you have given her a ring because mm. uh, you, are, you have to be here for three, three, four months, so you have given her, her a ring. Mm -hmm. And I was just, um, I was rattled because I, I there was a, the, uh, in, you know, incessant need to prove myself mm. to these people that, hello, you know, nothing is happening. And then in doing that, in doing that, I sensed how weak that was. You're constantly using words like rattled. Scared, afraid, vulnerable. Yeah. I felt all those things. But they were good things. Because they also taught me how to be strong. They also taught me how, how to walk my truth. What are you afraid of coming out because you're a man? Sorry? What are you afraid of coming out with the truth because you're a man? 
Today I'm not afraid because... Because somebody said on my show the other day, and I just didn't complete this. Some, some, a lawyer came on my program and they said that, you know, a man legally cannot be stalked. I yeah, don't, know, I I don't know the full substance to this legally. There is no but law. Were you, were you afraid of coming out because you felt that, you know, people would judge you as a man and someone else as a woman and there's a certain one-sided narrative. The moment, the, the, when I used to talk to people, I could see myself. De there was a desperation in my state to, to try and, and explain to them and that state is not a graceful state. It's not, it's not, it's not strength. It is weakness when you, when, when, when your, uh, I, your sense of your own identity is dependent on somebody else's perception. And I was falling for that. I so was succumbing. So you were afraid of being judged. I was afraid and then I just had to stop. I said, I'm going to stop this. I am not going to try and convince this person or that person. And people have, for no fault of theirs, they have judged me, they have made remarks on me. I've had to sit with my children and explain to them if they're getting teased in school. I've had to go through all of that, but I'm not the victim. I do not want to sit here and give you an impression about what I went through and how hard it was. I love that it was hard because <coughs> I learned some amazing things through my journey. And those are the things that I will teach my kids. All of 2015 this happened. So All by now you are Mr. Kang Mr. Kanganarana. If I can put it. I'm, just, I'm, I'm being lighthearted about it. That's the perception that's gone on in 2015. Yeah. Then in 2016, you file a police complaint. Take me through the chronology of what happened. What was that breakout point where you filed a police complaint for the first time in 2016? Yes, and, and you this is an important... You were sitting on all this compounded information and material at that point. This is an important question because uh, I've, I've heard some uh, strange questions that, you know, why did you react to silly X? If, uh, and, and, and if he reacts to silly X, that means he's proved that, it's, uh, that, that the relationship was there because he's proved that he is the X because he's reacted to it. No, in the specific question here is, which... No, th this is a question I've, I've, I've heard that's going around. I just want to, cl uh, to uh, clarify that. Sure. That sure. If you call me an abusive word and I protest, does that mean that I'm accepting that I am what you're calling me? <laughs> How does it make sense? Anyways, the silly X was the first time that this harassment went public. First, it was the, in, uh, the, 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 the harassment was in my inbox. I could deal with that. Mm. I can deal with that. It's all about focus. I've learned through my life how to focus on the better and the beautiful things in life. I can deal with that. Then the people around me started talking. I got desperate. I stopped. I didn't like that state of uh, uh, my, my state wasn't a strong state. And I said, I'm going to stop. Let them judge. It's fine. I'm going to walk my truth. And I, I will continue to create. I could handle that. Then it went into the public. The harassment became public. And in saying silly X, not only did the person make it a fact that, oh, there was a relationship because she's saying it, or why would she say it? She named you? The, my name was in the question. Mm. My name was in the question. So she was responding for the first time to you. That Hrithik Roshan has ousted you from a film called Archie 3, which was non-existent. Mm. And what do you have to say about that? To that, she said <coughs> something to the tune of, I don't know why these silly exes do such things. I have moved on. He should move on as well. So she not only... Uh, made it a fact that we had a relationship, but she also uh, made me into that small-minded boyfriend who cannot let go and is trying to, you know, get, get back at his mm. girlfriend. And she's the dignified one who's moving on. Mm. I saw all of this, and I remember I, I had a fractured foot at that time. I'm a very physical, restless person. And I, I was restricted to my bed, and I'm seeing all of this. Mm. Everything stacked up. Mm. You have to understand, I've had two years behind that silly ex comment. Mm. Yes, I've had two years of a journey yeah. behind that. And I thought I have to do something about this. That is when I tried to reach out through my manager. 
I, I, I tried, uh, my managers even tried to call up Rangoli. She picked up the phone and she disconnected it when she re realized who it was. It was somebody from my team. I tried all that. I tried to speak to people who knew her. Could you get some access to her? I even called up Sajid Nadiadwala. I took some time. I sent my manager there, etc., etc. et cetera. I said, nothing was working. And I said this. By looking at the evidence of this, one day this is going to explode on me. I had that instinct. And I had to do something about it. I called up my lawyers. I said, what can I do which, by which I can at least make their family aware? Can I write a letter to them and have Kangana's it sent across? Family. Yes. Family. What if they don't know that this is happening? So my lawyer said, you write the letter. Mm. I will turn it into a notice and we'll send it to her so they also know that it is a strong one. Mm -hmm. We have to put them on the back foot. Mm. So the, the notice which I sent, if you read that, they're almost in my words because I'm trying to explain to them. I've also attached some emails That's right. trying to show them that your daughter has Where mentioned... Where did you send this notice? Sorry? You sent the notice to Kangana's parents as well. Yeah, I mean, I sent it to her, not myself, but I had it sent. I also attached some mails which, which described how she is uh, talking about herself and talking about a disorder. Do the parents know about this? Mm. Is it true? Is it not true? That was my uh, uh, thought of, of make, trying to make them aware. Maybe, maybe the parents will, will, will be concerned and they will do something about this. Mm. So now, a legal notice is not a threat. A legal notice is the most civil way to tell somebody that, look, you have trampled upon me for two years, please stop, or I will have to go to the designated institution, the law of the land, mm. which is built to protect mm. me. Mm. I am not wanting to fight with you. I'm just asking you to please stop. It backfired. Because backfired what way? My lawyers very expressly told me that a legal uh, a notice, this document, is a private one. The media cannot use it. And that is why I sent it. Maybe he was wrong, or the, may, or, or the media did not you know, uh, feel it's important to follow that rule. Or oh, I don't even know if there's a rule. <coughs> this is what I was told, and I sent the notice. And it completely backfired, because that party started saying that he's calling me mad. I'm not calling you mad. I don't even know you. You may be a wonderful person. But why are you doing this to me? So I got letters from, from, from parents all over the world telling me that I'm, I'm, I'm not just a, a small-minded, silly boyfriend, but I'm also uh, uh, stupid because I don't know what uh, Asperger's is. I have not claimed that you have Asperger's. It is in an email that you have sent me, which I have made a part of that letter of mine and sent to you so that your, your, your parents would read this. Everything I did backfired. Every single thing, every single move I did backfired. It left me with no choice but to finally decide that I'm done with this. Let them judge me. I mean, what a beautiful story it would be if I could just walk my truth and see where that got me. I had to tell myself a good story. I had to tell myself an empowering story. Rithik, you know, so... The sum total till this point is for two years, and now I'm going to be straight with you, right? For two years, you were being foolish. And then, when you are called a silly ex, that is your moment. For two years, you don't even completely blame her. You believe there so is an imposter. I can, I've handled a you lot. You believe that she's going through some psychological troubles because she believes it. an imposter led her into a relationship with Rithik Roshan. I've ignored but it. But the I've moment you were called a silly ex, that was the moment of epiphany for you. That's when you started back calculating and saying, perhaps you were wrong in your own assessment of her. Yes, yes, and I was wrong. I was wrong. I should have been <coughs> aggressive right from the beginning. And I will be now. I will be now. What do you mean you will be? In all my experience in, is in, in my life, as I said, I, I'm not a confrontational person. I have to be. I have to learn that. That's also a strength. I'm not that. I shy away from it. And maybe that's, that's, that's my uh, shortcoming. I don't usually interview film stars. 
I'm telling you, maybe interviewed a handful in my life. I have never encountered anybody from the film world who has ever in an interview told me that they are scared, that they are vulnerable, that they are afraid. And I'm not making any generalizations, but let me tell you one thing about people from the film world. They put on a veneer and nobody talks about their weaknesses because they think about the impact okay. that this acceptance of weakness will have on their exactly. <coughs> film personalities. A little detour, Rithik, while we are talking now. Do you ever worry that now that Rithik Roshan is talking openly on television, on Republic, and talking about fears, vulnerabilities, scared, having made mistakes, how to deal with it, all of this will have an impact on the superstar that you are on TV? Because, you know... That's all right. What about the superstar image? That's all right. What do you mean that's all right? I'm first a human being, and I'm not going to be shy or apologetic of my emotions. Every single person is afraid of his vulnerability. I've learned this the hard way, and I've had to accept my vulnerability. I have had to accept that I am not that strong. Maybe I'm not that strong, and that's okay. At least I'm not pretending to be strong. Because if you're pretending to be strong, that's not strength. It's, it's stronger to accept. It's stronger to accept that, yes, it made me cry. It's stronger to accept that it, it affected my well-being. It's stronger to accept that there were times that I was rendered completely helpless. I, I had to accept it at some point of time. I had, believe me, I had people who, who told me so very confidently that, Hrithik, what are you doing? What are you doing? This is good for you. This is good for you. You know, it's, it's going to turn your, your good boy into a, you'll have a little bit of a bad boy image. It's good. You'll get more and more attractive. Or you're such a big star. You give relevance to this, it's going to bring you as low as this. Mm. Keep going, man. Look at you. You're a humongous star. And I kept trying to attach myself to that star to mm. feel good mm -hmm. in my head. But there was a difference. The human being that I was couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't unite the two. And I realized that I'm not a star. I'm not a star. I am a human being who is an actor. I work, I work hard. And I try and teach my kids the good things. Which is why maybe I'm very uncomfortable when I'm on stage. When I, the, the first time I was on stage, my legs were shaking. I had to wear two pairs of pants. So this whole star, superstar, that's an illusion. <coughs> it's an illusion. I, you, have to, you have to look at the truth. Who am I? And what is my truth? And am I doing what I need to do to make myself for my well-being? People go into <coughs> depression because they are not able to express because they are stars and they are afraid. So they will, they will keep pretending you know, that, I, that I'm cool. You know, it's all good and stuff like that. But inside, when they're alone in their home, they are depressed and they have no one to talk to. That's why you have so many cases around the world, who, these, these amazing actors who have, who have just committed suicide because they, they couldn't reach out, because they were afraid of looking weak. At some point of time, we all have to understand that being a superstar is, is bestowed, it's bestowed, it's, it's a gift from the people. You don't have to wear it on your head mm. and start pretending like you're the king. Mm. You're not, you're a worker, mm. just like all of them. So I, 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 I had to, I had to, it took me time. I did pretend for a long time. Mm. I did pretend, yeah, it's cool, it's cool, you know, I'm gonna do this. Mm. But eventually I had to come into terms with the truth. And when did you snap now? Now you filed another police complaint. No, that was not a snap. That was a well thought out window that we found <coughs> because I, my, mm. my, my express instructions was that this is going to be done in complete secrecy. I do not want a spectacle. I do not want the media to come to know. I need to find a window. So I couldn't do it while I was doing Kabul. I couldn't do it while her film Rangoon, Rangoon was releasing. 
So I had to find a window when everything was. Oh, so was, you was wanted tied to up. file a police complaint at a time when there was nothing which was would nothing be done to on. affect your or because her this film was not I'm sorry, but that's extremely generous of you to think that your no, police complaint should it's, not be timed with her film release. It's it's intelligent because of my intention. My <coughs> intention was not to attack. Mm. My intention was, look, what can I do? Okay, I cannot solve this. Mm. Nobody can help me. Mm. That's fine. Mm. What can I do to help myself? Right. I can protect myself mm. by handing over, surrendering everything that I have to the cops mm. for my own protection in case tomorrow mm. something mm. happens mm. and I'm blamed <coughs> further. Mm. If I'm blamed further, mm. the police needs to know my entire story. Mm. So my, my complaint is a narrative of this entire story, the way it happened, the way it transpired with every single detail and the emails and I surrendered that to them. That's the best thing Pritik. that I could do. And then again, then again, I shut myself out from this. I was carrying the stigma of this disgusting man, but I shut myself <coughs> from this topic and I said, I'm going to now just carry on, build better, create more, and everything's gonna be okay. In the run-up to her last film, she gave an interview yeah. to a Hindi news channel in which she went into laborious detail about her relationship with her, with you. Did you see that interview? Have you seen that interview? Yes, I saw one of them. And what was your reaction to it? Well, in the beginning, I had already, as I said, after I filed the complaint, I had shut this out from my mind and I said that whatever happens now, I'm not going to get affected. I am going to just keep going on my path. When I saw this, I started to laugh. I was amused. And then slowly, slowly, I realized that this is going to blow up again because she was just so convincing. I was just, uh, I was in, I just couldn't un 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 understand how, how convincing she was if she was lying. And then I had a word with, with, uh, with the doctor, Mr. Dr. Hari Shetty, who explained how that could be possible. And then I un understood that. And I still allowed it <coughs> I knew that this would affect me for a few days. I have handled it in the past. I will still move on. I had no intention of reacting to this at all. Rithik, do you feel you have been used as a prop by her for publicity purposes before films? Because it's okay. You can use my There have been innumerable Anyone references to your relationship with her carefully timed with film releases. Yeah. Have you been used as a prop? Now that you look back yeah, in I mean, retrospect. That doesn't matter. That doesn't, matter. That doesn't affect me. <clears throat> People can use my name uh, for whatever uh, purpose. If it, if it helps them or serves them, you can please be welcome to use my name. Now, you know, Rithik, the way this is poised, it's her version versus yours, some would say. And you said that she put up a fairly convincing performance mm. in when she came on TV. Does it cross your mind, what if people don't believe you? I have walked four years with people not believing me. I don't know, but it doesn't matter anymore. I have learned how to walk my truth. It's taken me time. I've learned. And if people are going to make this into an oratory battle, <coughs> I am not an orator. It's not what I specialize in. I'm not good at that. So if that's the determining factor, well then, I guess you might as well have a dance-off and determine the, job, the, 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 the truth to who wins there. All we have to see is truth versus lies. And I'm again saying this, I'm not here to accuse or put someone down or you know, cast allegations. I'm just here because I, I finally know that I need to defend myself in this. I need to shut this chapter. I need to probably create some awareness that something like this could happen and then move on. What if she doesn't shut it? That's okay. You said you will respond with aggression. Power. What if she becomes aggressive? Oh, well. 
Okay, so what, if, what would you say to her? Because presumably we must presume this, what? that she would be watching this right now hmm. and she would be watching you as a cliched question. Hmm. But if Kangana is watching this, what would you say to her directly? I don't know. I, I think if I do get a chance to uh, speak with her, I will tell her what, uh, what my thoughts are, but not here. This is national TV. It's not just going to go to her, but I will. If I have a chance, I will. But you're willing to let go. Police complaints are investigated. Matters go to court. As I said, Arnav, <clears throat> I'm not here to fight. For once, I want to say my truth. And that's it. What else can I do? And not just say my truth. I never want to be in a situation of he said, she said. Because that is just as disgraceful as, as what's been going on. I'm not here to do that. And I know that through this interview, you have asked me questions that have uh, pro prodded me on to, to, to give you a narrative. But this is, not my, uh, this is not my intention. My intention is not he said, she said. I do not go by my words. <coughs> I want to tell this to the people. Do not go by my words. Do not trust me. You have no reason to trust me. All I'm saying is you go by the evidences. That's it. Small point of disagreement. I'm not trying to get you into a narrative if you, if I have only taken you through a chronology. We began in 2009. I just hope they and don't. And we've gone up to I 2017. Just, I, I just hope they don't misconstrue this as, you know, now he's saying this now. You know, he's, he's, I'm not, I'm not here to do that. I'm not here to, you know, fight. I'm, as I said, I'm, I'm not, I've never had a fight in my entire life. I don't uh, believe in that. If people believe me, great. If people don't believe me, great. I know, where, I know where my journey leads me, and that's where I will go. And I will manifest, <coughs> eventually I will manifest exactly the person I am. Because mm. that's the equation of the universe that I believe in. Mm. And I, it's true because it's my premise. Yeah. For me, it's true. Yeah. So I will manifest what I am I'm exactly about eventually. Yeah. So I have no fear. You know, Rithik, I always opine, I always judge, I always give my perspective on this one, I actually have not. Because as I began by saying, this medium of television is a very transparent medium. And you are as up close and personal in this conversation as you have been. I think people will come to the right conclusion. And I also appreciate the fact that you have not gone into making any personal attacks on her. And uh, for your frankness, for your restraint, and most importantly, I must say, Rithik, for being the first television star, film star, who has not been worried about expressing his vulnerabilities on television, I must thank you very much. Are you afraid, my final question, of victim shaming? You know, they say it happens only to women, but in your case, were you afraid when you came out and said, I'm being stalked? by Kangana, when Mahesh Jetpalani, your lawyer, went public and he says he's being stalked by Kangana. Were you afraid when all of this started that it could go horribly wrong for you? Uh, horribly wrong because... Because you were saying you're being stalked. <clears throat> well, I think that's the terminology that you have to use for what has happened, I guess. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't expressed my opinion about what, you know, what this means. But as I said, I am never a victim in my mind. It doesn't matter uh, what uh, label uh, gets put on me. They call me a superstar first. <coughs> Maybe they, then they call me a megalomaniac. Then they will call me, oh, he's being a victim. I gotta know what I am. I am not a victim. I'm not a victim. I, I could be. I could use that, maybe, 
because I, I know what I have been through. But I'd, this had the power to turn me into a very cynical man, Arnab. It had the power to turn me into a very bitter man. But I knew in my heart that I cannot afford that. Because a cynical man cannot create. A cynical, bitter father cannot teach his children about the, the wonder and the beauty of life. I had to take that anger, I had to take the helplessness, and I had to somehow mold it into a form of love and compassion. And try and still contribute to whoever would, would be willing for me to contribute to them. Yeah. It's very hard to, <clears throat> to uh, you know, laugh at the joke of a person however funny it is, if you find that person disgusting. Yeah. It had the power to ostracize me in my own mind from a sense of community. Yeah. Now that is a very, very dangerous, dangerous thing for the mind. I had to be aware, I had to catch it in time. A human being is a social being. Without a sense of community, you will just wither away. I had to be very, very aware of that. And I had to sometimes just stand up and clap my hands and, and build my experiences. Mm -hmm. Think of things that I, I could do that, that could contribute to this person or that person. No matter what they thought of me, let me at least do my thing. Let me, let me spread as much as I, as I can to my kids. Let me, let me, if we are going on a vacation, let me, let me think of the most incredible experiences that I can mm -hmm. think of in my imagination. So it was a great exercise, great exercise for, for my imagination. Yeah. Um, it was a great exercise to, 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 to sit and envision myself five years from now and the kind of person I will be, even if I walk this path knowing that people are judging me as this disgusting man. But in five years of walking this path, I used to, in a naive way, imagine the look in my eye that I walked this path alone. Yeah. It would. I would be a stronger person, I'd, I'd, I'd be a more, yeah. a wiser person. I would get so many wonderful things to teach my kids. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I wish you well, Ritik. I wish your family well. Thank you, Anna. Please wish them from my side. I will. And I'm glad that we spoke. Thank you. First time in my life I've not passed judgment, Ritik. <laughs> but you've spoken your heart out. I think people will know the truth. Doesn't matter. Thank you, Ritik. Thank you. It's wonderful to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank Ritik. You. Thank you.